David. David, yeah? How are you? Nice to meet you, sir. Sorry, I was just grabbing some No, this is great, 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 great. Where have you parked your bike? Uh, just around the corner. All right. That's okay. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Okay, so this is a, a photo of one of the, I guess it's it's a panel or it's a it's a canvas and it's on the floor. So it's like it's a tile floor maybe in your kitchen and you're photographing straight down. Mm. It might be flat. The textures are quite different in that this seems more This is this is actually quite a this is quite a small picture painted on handmade it's drawn on handmade paper. Okay. And this is an example of the sort of plain air type drawing. Okay. That I do. Okay. So in this case, this uh, I went and sat down by the Lamtrian River, yeah. where the where the the streams that come down from the hillsides have sort of widened a bit, uh, and the river runs down through the valley, and it's a little bit slower, and the sort of grass is growing up on each side, mm -hmm. and um, the river sort of runs over and round these various rocks, and I've done quite a lot of drawings, you know, just I go out there with a with a pad, and I just spend thirty or forty minutes, sure, and I do a sort of very focused but quite quick yeah. sort of drawing but that sort of, sort of to me is very very it's a sort of that observation that i really enjoy right and i've i've talked with a number of other artists who who use sketching to sort of inform their main they, their art so they sure. don't necessarily consider their sketches to be really their main art mm. but to me my sketches are as equal, equally important mm -hmm. as any finished artwork that I do. Yeah. You know, and, you know, when, when I go to, out to, to draw on the landscape, I don't want to take whole paraphernalia of sort of oil painting yeah, yeah. Or, or try to do my soil painting out in the landscape. So I have these sort of book, books of handmade or whatever paper. Yeah. And I'd use these uh, chalky crayons. Right, And I right. can just sit down somewhere. I can go off on my bicycle or I can walk and I can sit down somewhere and, and just do some more quiet observation. Sure. Yeah. So, so like the, the just to, to give the listener a kind of frame of reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially the, the perspective is imagine looking down from maybe mm -hmm. a meter or two meters over a stream and yet the perspective is also like you're also seeing the rocks as if mm. kind of like face on so you yeah. kind of get the feeling of the water giving some movement yeah. and the in terms of the colors in there there's a lot of the the earthy brown and cream but there's mm. a bit of blue and there's a bit of mm. reds and yellows and greens in, in terms of the grasses uh mm. it's kind of abstract but you can also get the feeling like oh yeah that's a that's like a you it, you can make the leap or the the understanding that this is a uh uh and you call it a sketch of a stream and yet mm. there's something spontaneous about it right yeah. which is i think which uh, which it maybe gets conveyed better by it being spontaneous yeah uh in this case i was leaning over a bridge okay, okay. spanning the so i was looking sort of down and sort of forward towards the stream a bit right and I, I d I'm not a sort of photographic type paint drawer. No. I'm, I'm not interested in, I mean, I think anyone can go out with, I mean, we use our camera, of course, we can get the photographic image. Yeah. So I think as an artist, it's good to explore sort of a different way. Oh, yeah. So the, when I draw, I do bring in a sort of impressionist, yeah. impressionistic aspect or let my imagination sort of work into what I'm looking at sure. to a certain extent. Sure. And I just try to, yes, capture the scene mm -hmm. to a certain degree as accurate. I mean, I sort of plotted out the rocks and stones fairly, fairly accurately. But at the same time, I'm not too worried. Right. That it's not entirely yeah. accurate. And it is definitely a bit impressionistic. And, and, and because it's a, in this case, a sort of a fairly public place, people walking back and forth across the street. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I sort of drew it fairly sort of quickly, mm -hmm. but at the same time, when I am drawing, I'm very, very focused and concentrated. Sure, sure. Well, it's yeah. also apparent that you, you have a, an idea training uh, sense of where the light's coming from and also mm. how to convey that, that, that feeling. So I want it to have a three dimensional feeling. Sure. So it has strong darks and lights yeah. and also a feeling of movement. Yeah. So if you look at it, you could sort of feel your eye could wander around it and you could feel the way the water moves differently because yeah. 
ever since I've been been very young, my dad was a very keen fisherman and he used to take me up into very wild areas like in Dartmoor in England to fish in these little streams for mountain tri- trout. Right, right, right. And um, with that sort of fishing, you're constantly moving along the river. It's not okay. sort of fishing where you just sit there and right, sort of float. Okay, you're like chasing but, the fish. But you, 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 you sort of move along the river over the course of the day, okay. fishing different pools and different rapids and right, so on right, and so right. forth. And you're absolutely focused on the river, you know. Sometimes there's a deep pools mm-hmm. um, and you can sort of see that there's this sort of rippling on the surface, but you know that deep down there's this sort of, you know, that there's different sort of currents going on and okay. then there's the sort of waterfalls and the rapidy bits where the light is being bounced about, you know, and there's weeds, some places with weeds and so on and so forth. So to me, I've always found the movement of water absolutely fascinating. Sure. And there was a time when I, after I left university, where I worked for a while as a wild water river guide in the Queensland rainforest. Oh, wow. And every day we would take tourists down in these rubber boats down the river. Nice. And it was, it would, the rapids were quite sort of dangerous and sure. sort of scary in a way. Yeah. And you had to try and get everyone down safely. Yeah. But when we came to the big pools, we'd sort of talk about the rainforest as you floated down and you'd sort of point out, oh, there's that stinging plant and, you know, there's those creepers or there's a, um, uh, a parrot or something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, it, it, yeah, so. so you saying that reminds me of like of a funny thing in that in this job, you're taking people down this river and the um, narrative that you're using is dictated by the actual physical, the, the, the landscape and the other. So at some point, the water happens to hit this large pool. So it gives yeah. you the quiet, the space to kind yeah. of... And then you can hear this sort of roaring as you get close to yeah. the next crazy rapids, yeah. right? So there's sort of periods of elation and sort of where you're just sort of desperately trying to keep the bar from flipping over sure, or whatever. Sure. And even times when it did flip over and you're yeah. all just sort of careening down. Yeah, the thing, yeah, right? yeah. And then uh, you have these uh, sort of quiet periods yeah. in between. And so when you're doing that job, you're very, very focused on water right. you know, and how it moves and the currents because sometimes the currents go backwards. So, so you could have your rubber raft going down and the main current is going towards a rapid, but if you just go off slightly to one side, yeah, it's actually reversing. It's reversing, and you can just sort of sit there and float around again in a mm-hmm. sort of quiet circle, and then you can get back into the main current again. Nice, you know. Nice. And when when I had my little kids, I used to take them up to the streams in Taipo Cow, right. and we'd float little leaves down, and we would watch how the leaves sort okay. of circled round. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back. And so to 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 me, the flow of water has always been you know something very fascinating and I, I always come back to it and as you say that i mean mm. uh, your work had like before i said it looked like a vag- very vaginal it's more mm. like a vulva really yeah, yeah but there is this sense of flow the sense of maybe the a river's speed mm. uh is just you know orders of magnitude faster than the flow of soils which over say a million years are still flowing like rivers of soil. Yeah, well, I mean, rocks, obviously, we we may think of them as inert, but in a way, they're just energy that has been held tightly. Mm-hmm. When I crush up a rock to make paint, I feel like I'm releasing that energy. Oh, okay, okay. You know, again. Interesting. And, and then uh, the soils, the soils are somewhere between that and water because soils, uh, when for soils to be full of life, they need oxygen getting down in there. They, the oxygen gets down through the wormholes, mm-hmm. you know, through um, all the microorganisms living within the soil sort of flocculate, they yeah. say flocculate, and, and it enables the, the oxygen to get in and, yeah. and those microorganisms need that. And they need water, Yeah. right? So a healthy soil, if the water runs through it too fast, like sand, then you lose the water. Yeah. If it's really sort of compressed the soil and it's like clay, the water sits on the surface or, or it gets in and really waterlogs it and no oxygen can get in and, you know, uh, it just sort of becomes stagnant. Sure. Right. So a really healthy soil has a balance of soil, water and air, mm. you know. I love that. I like, mm. I come and meet you to talk about your art and lo- I'm getting this deep dive into soil. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. This is so good. <laughs> no, I love talking about soil. So to me, doing art is just another way to talk about soil, really. I love it. Yeah. This is yeah. great. This is great. Um, <laughs> like the environment of us around us. So we're in your artist 
space or studio. Yeah. It's maybe, I don't know, four meters by three meters, like a cubic yeah. sort of um, mm -hmm. shelter. Yeah. The doors open, the windows open. Yeah. We hear the birds. I can smell the, there must be somebody who's burning a fire yeah. next door somewhere. Yeah. Is that a mango tree? No, that's, um, it's a sort of type of um, jasmine. A oh, okay. Actually, it, no, no. More, it's ylang ylang. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's got sort of long, white, beautiful fragrance. Flower. Right, right, right. Yeah, ginormous. Yeah. 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 I've got mango trees just through right. my... I can show you. I've got a whole orchard area. No, I can. Yeah, I can. That, 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 I know that uh, this valley does have and, mangoes. Um, yeah. I can introduce you to my compost heaps. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're bent. I love it. I love it. Yeah, right. Uh, let's move on to. You, you said compost, which means let's move on to the next photo. Mm. So, is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.